Hello Flosstube, this is Lori of Mischievous Stitches. I want to welcome all of you to my channel today. I'm very glad that you're here. Today in the U.S., it is Memorial Day. It is a day that we honor those that have given the ultimate sacrifice and service to our country. A sacrifice that has been made to hold those freedoms that we hold so dear in place. And it is a day that we vow to never forget the sacrifices that they've made. Last week, I did not do a video. I have very little to share. I've spent so much time over the past month and a half in my yard. It looks great. I'm very happy with everything that we, my husband and I have done. But we're to the point where we can just maintain and hold, just maintain all the works that we've done. So there'll be a little bit of harvesting of vegetables and probably some deadheading of flowers and that kind of thing, but no more mulching, no more loads of soil that needs to be spread, um, those kind of things. So all the projects that we made lists for and put in place um, and ideas that we had have been completed for this year. So anything else may be a few projects for the fall, probably a lot of projects for next spring, um, but right now we're at, a, we're at a hold, which I'm happy with. All of that has taken away all my extra time when I get off of work, so there's been very little cross stitch. I have tried to do a little bit of finishing. I will share those things with you. Um, I did not get my two um, fully finished items completed for April, I carried them over into May, and then I should have had four in May, and I did not. I had only one finish out of the four that I had a goal for. So I'm also gonna hold any goals that I'm gonna make for myself. I'm not gonna impose any on me, in any on myself. For the next few weeks, I just wanna stitch purely for pleasure. I wanna join a couple of stitch alongs, I want to stitch when I have time available because summer is fast approaching and that means weekend trips and cookouts on the weekend with my family and that is mainly the time that I have to stitch is on the weekend and my weekends I'm sure will be full, um, happily full. So I'm going to share with you what little bit I have worked on. Um, they're both whips or focus pieces. Oh, excuse me, I dropped my pattern over the past few weeks so you've seen them a couple of times and this is i still dropped it again um this is alphabet zoo by blue ribbon designs and it calls for the color cranberry a silken color cranberry and i'm using 3362 dmc in green when you saw it last i had completed uh four squares four letters in the pattern and I'm currently working on C. I had hoped to finish this before last weekend um, and I got very little to no stitching done last weekend which is why I had, I had nothing to share so I didn't film. But this is the little bit that I had. So I had put in what you see here. I have stitched in a cat. I have stitched in the upper and lower case um, C. And then there's a bird there as well, so I'm assuming that's a cardinal. I also got started on a crocodile, so all of those are there. And I have a few more animals, a cow. I'm working on the cows, um, cow as well. And so those things are there, and I look forward to finishing C and sharing that with you at some point. And the other thing is my red work sampler. So many of you have jumped on board with one red thread before bed. I'm so happy that you did. Thank you so much. And thanks to those that used the hashtag. Someone tagged me in it just a few, um, within an hour ago that this is her first red sampler and she's finding she's making progress. And that just warms my heart when someone tags me and uses the hashtag that was created for this. So thank you for that. Um, but the piece that I was working on that I hope to finish by today which was red work sampler is not finished. And this is by I, what I have been calling Moho Stitches. And I was corrected in my last video and it's Mojo Stitches is what I am told. Not by the designer herself, but the person who corrected me. Um, I take what she said on good faith. Um, and I believe that I have been saying it wrong all along. So it is Mojo, not Moho but Mojo Stitches, and this is Red Wart Sampler. 
The story behind this for me is I purchased this with a friend of mine when she visited back in April. We both purchased the pattern. Um, I'm doing mine in a rust color of Campfire by Classic Color Works. I purchased um, three of these skeins and I'm down to a very skimpy one and I've already been working into this one as well but here are the threads I have left just I'm telling you that just so if you decide to stitch it and you use your own classic color works color by chance you're gonna need at least three skeins so I want to pass that information along but mine is campfire and I'm very close to a finish I had a very sweet stitch sister contact me and said that she would um, chart the word rust work for me and she did and I received it in email yesterday but here's where I am when you saw it last I could had completed this corner I've come across even further with this flower band here and yesterday in a zoom meeting with my friends Donna and Natasha we we I <laughs> got a good start on this corner so um, my husband and I had a little road trip today to the coast and I was hoping to at least finish that corner and that didn't happen um, I don't know if you've ever tried if any of you car stitch I do car stitch stitch but we left early in the morning so as the Sun's coming up and it's hitting just certain ways in the car um, and there's tree we were in a forested area so the Sun is shining through the trees and that um, breaking the light constantly not necessarily like a strobe light but to give an example of what what i was feeling it's hard to stitch and find my holes to place my needle when the light is flashing dimming flashing dimming flashing dimming so i put it away <laughs> And I started reading. I could find that easy because I could block, um, turn the book away from the sun. And with stitching, I needed the sun, so. But with uh, the red wart sampler, I hope to finish that soon. I am sure <laughs> that it'll be finished in June and I'll get it finished. But other than that, I have no real plans. I'm not gonna get, like I said, I'm not really gonna give myself any goals. I've been doing it so far this year and it works really well for me because I'm goal oriented. I like to scratch things off of a list and that just didn't work this time. So in June, I know there are two stitchers. One of them is finally a farm girl, has decided to do a stitch along for Carolyn Manning's designs. And I bought this one at the beginning of last year just because I saw Stitching Brat on Instagram stitching one and loved it. I even bought a piece of even weave to stitch it on because I want my stitches to lay perfectly. And I purchased Tiger's Eye. And I purchased a very neutral tone piece of even weave. And you're gonna full, it's a full coverage piece, so I'm gonna cover up all the fabric. So I'm not gonna see the fabric, but because of the colors I'm using, which are tones of greens and beiges and creams and reds uh, or burgundies but, but rather um, if there's a chance that any of it wants to show I want it to blend in with the color tones that I'm using so that was to be started on the first I guess this kind of is a goal I'm not gonna start this even though I think the start date is the first of June until I finish red work sampler and if I work on it this week I should be able to finish it up I should be I've got a little bit of haul in. I'm, I'm going to share that with you. I've got a couple of gifties and a couple of things I've got in and something that I need to apologize for. I showed last weekend that I was going to start last weekend and I didn't start it. I ended up in the yard all day, both days. And when I got into the house, took a quick bath, I was out. <laughs> there was no other focus. I just... I was like jelly just once I laid on the couch it was like ah oh, and I was done I was done so um, what I did get in I ordered this and I don't know if it's on her site I will look if it is I will link it below but this is autumn at not forgotten farm so this is um, here it is we're all fit, familiar with Lori of not forgotten farm and there is cross stitch as well as 
rug hooking in here with uh, instructions and that kind of thing. So I'm going to show you just a couple of the pieces. So you can see here, it's um, if you're familiar with Lori at all, you're familiar with her types of designs. Very um, folk arty. I love her use of colors. So you've got some wool applique um, pennants here, and then you have cross stitch. And then I was really interested in this piece here, and I got mine out at a song. Um, I think it was just a few, um, like I said, I don't know if it's on Lori's site, but I was purchasing something else on Amazon. This popped up, it was just a few dollars. I couldn't say no. So I've got this. And then I ordered these just because, once again, I'm on Etsy, I'm looking around, and these are my first um, hand-dyed by Rolanda silk colors. Let me see if I can hold something behind it so you can see the colors a little better. I purchased um, what I thought were going to be very fallish colors. They're still beautiful colors. They just didn't turn out quite like I thought. So you've got a um, burgundy plumish color here. And then this I thought was going to be more rusty. It's more like a rust and, and um, maybe a salmon together. And then this I thought was going to be like an olive greenish. And it's like shades of beige and teal. Still beautiful. Still happy with them. They're just not exactly what I, the colors I thought I was getting. And I don't hold that against anyone, the, the dye or anything like that. Uh, there's no way for cameras to pick up the beauty of things. You have to see them with your own, your, with your own eyes. And so I'm going to find something to use these on, but I wanted to share those with you. They came really quick. And then I shared this book, I think, in my last video, and this was Friendship Garden um, by Blackbird Designs, and I decided I wanted to do a garden journal, and there is a pattern for a garden journal inside, and it calls for something called Prairie Cloth. Now, I did order mine from uh, the Fat Quarter Shop, and this is it, and, I've, and it is a, I wish I could show, I wish you could see it up close. Um, because this is not going to show it to you well, but it is a thicker weave. It's not a linen. I think it's a cotton blend, and it is a thicker weave. If I had to give the best thing, it's going to be kind of like burlap. It's just that thick. It's just not as rough and stiff as burlap. I think I'm really going to enjoy stitching on it because it is a higher count. Um, let me look real quick. I can't remember exactly what the count for it was. It says, um, it just says three eighths yard of prairie cloth. It doesn't give the count on the instructions. So prairie cloth must have, and don't quote me on that, must have a standard um, thread per, per, per inch. But with that being said, this is what I've got. So I've gotten everything I need, the fabric, the threads, everything I need to finish it up. I just need to get cracking on it. But this is my idea. So with this garden, I'm on a journey. I'm learning things. I'm watching YouTube videos when I get a minute. Um, I actually purchased this this week. I remember the almanac, farmer's almanac from my grandparents and my father would have this. Um, I've been reading through this this week um, when I take a bath. <laughs> That's the place I have time. I can't stitch in the bath, but I can read in the bath. So I've been reading this. I've been picking up tip, tri tricks and tips. And there are certain things I'm not going to want to forget from this point to next year. And I'm worried that I will because my memory is about that long. So that's the reason for the journal. So plus I have just ideas. Just I hope I can bring them all to fruition. But I just have ideas of things I want to do. Isn't that the way it always is? I did get a lot of questions last week about this. And this is an odd like cover. 
Now, the Ot light that I have, I don't know the model name, but it is a long necked magnifying lamp by Ot light. It also has a handhold on the top so you can move the magnifier up and down. And then the lights are beneath but around the magnifier. This works perfectly. I bought this at the Stitch and Frame shop last, um, a couple of weeks ago. And like I said, it's in my last YouTube video. If you wanna refer back to, um, I threw the, the packaging away so I don't remember actually who created it, but I got a lot of questions about it. So here it is. I don't even worry about tying. It does have elastic around the edge. I just slip this over my aunt light the few, couple of times that I have stitched in the past couple of weeks and it and it holds snugly it's like a shower cap on top of my magnifier I don't even have to to cinch it closed tie it closed around the neck it works fine just as it is so for those of that wanting to know how I like it I love it if I had another light, I would buy one because up at the, to this point, I just had an unused project envelope thrown over the top of it when I was done because we all know the hazards of stitching with a magnifier and not covering the, magnif the magnifier when we're not in the room. So um, for safety, always cover, if you did not know, cover your magnifier on your magnifying lamp. There are um, stories from other stitchers that weren't quite so did not know or just walked out of the room temporarily for got distracted and things have been burned so um, anyway cover your magnifiers ladies and gentlemen cover your magnifiers this is a good option I got a gifty in the mail uh, from a friend I was part of a, a game for a giveaway on a zoom and this is what I got. And I'm so thankful for it. So it's things I didn't have. Can you believe it? I, I'm, I'm one that buys when I want something, when something pops up. Um, when I see something I like, I go and search for it right then. And I love what I received. And I don't even, um, I can't believe that I didn't have some of this. So I got a lovely card. And that was so sweet. Thank you. A piece of 32 count linen. Um, in the color Old Mill, and it is 8 by 17, and it come so sweetly packaged. Let me show you the packaging. So it was in a, in a uh, mailing envelope, wrapped in pink tissue paper. Along with this fabric, like I said, it is covered with a piece of ribbon, and I will reuse this ribbon. Anytime I get anything with a ribbon, I'll pull the ribbon off, I give it a quick iron, and I have a jar that I put those things in, because you can use them waste not want not and then I have Woodland Berry Erica Michaels a kit for this and it was a club kit so I have everything that I need inside to stitch this strawberry I did not ha I do not have a strawberry I have bought the um, the small blackbird design book that has the strawberry in but I have not case cased I have not kitted any of them up so I'm happy to have this and then I have a, what I'm calling a stitcher's mat. I'm not sure what the proper name for it is. I have a small one that has a piece of felt on, which I love. So I'm happy to have this little quilted mat. And I think my sweet friend made it herself. And I didn't ask if I could give her name, so I'm not giving her name. But she knows who she is, and I want to say thank you. So there's this. And then there's this blackbird design, and this is... Um, flowers for you. Some of you may f be familiar with this piece. I was not and I am in love with the basket. Isn't that gorgeous? Now this piece is copyrighted 2012. So some of you may have it. Um, I don't know if it's in print or if it's not, but I will list it below so that um, you have the name if you're interested but I did receive this, so that was fun. It was fun to be, um, I was invited to join some ladies for a Zoom meeting in, in another state, and I had such a fun time. It's always fun to meet, meet other stitchers, and it always shows me what a small world it is because there was another sweet stitcher in that group that had one time lived in my area, so she knew my local LMS that's now out of business. She knew the owners, and so, 
Um, it was like we were already friends. Uh, so that was so wonderful. So thanks, lady, to enjoy um, inviting me to your party because I really did have a good time. And then there's one other thing that came in with my prairie cloth. Um, since I needed to order that prairie cloth and I couldn't find it anywhere but Fat Quarter Shop, I took the opportunity to, to buy something I've been wanting for a little while. And if you've been watching my videos for a while, you know my affinity for tomato pin cushions. So I got a little needle minder. I don't think I'm going to, I'm not going to use it as a needle minder. I think they're great. And I've had my time with needle minders, but I'm, I don't use them anymore because I'm, I'm stitching in hand a lot. And so I'm thinking this is more of, because it's got the magnet, why can't I use it as a brooch? We can use them as brooches. These magnets are really strong. We're going to a stitch thing. Why can't we wear them? I'm going to wear mine. You wear yours. And I also got a sweet card from Nicole Buckeye Stitcher, a little postcard I love. She's so sweet, and she sent this out again, and this has everything to do with spring and biddies and birdhouses, nests with eggs. Thank you, Nicole. So those, there are those things. And then there was one other thing. I wasn't sure if I did or didn't want to talk about this on my video, but I am. Just because I don't want it to happen to you. I shared a couple of videos back that we were getting a puppy. Long story short, we were ordering the puppy online. There are others in my family have done the same thing. It's not uncommon. Um, I even had a, a um, one of my employees recently ordered a puppy from Romania of all places and um, basically the same steps, the same procedures, the same telephone calls, the same emails that she received, uh, my family member received, was what we were receiving. We didn't know there was a problem until the day the puppy was to arrive. Um, the first thing that troubled me was the time of the call because I knew the puppy was to be on um, with animal transport at the, at, you know, getting ready to fly out at a certain time. And the time of the call was not a good time. That was the first indicator. And that was the day that he was to fly, he was to fly out. Long story short, um, I do deal with uh, scams, certain type of scams with my job and I didn't see it coming. Like I said, um, we checked out uh, the breeder. Um, we found information on them just to, to check them. Um, we followed behind the animal transport company. We were getting, like I said, the emails that we should have been getting. We got ca calls the day before, prepping us for a day of and what we needed, what, you know, what time we needed to be prepared to pick up the puppy, those kind of things. It just didn't work out. <laughs> we were scammed. Um, the good thing is that the money that transferred for the payment of the puppy, we got back. Um, I don't know that, um, I'm just disappointed. <laughs> I'm disappointed in myself that I wasn't able to catch it. My husband really blamed himself and I, and I'm better at trying to soothe him than soothe myself. Um, I can't, I really don't need to carry that guilt because I don't think like a thief because I'm not one. And so when you're scammed, just keep that in mind. And I will try to keep in mind, you, I can't carry that guilt because I did nothing wrong. I had faith in the person that I was purchasing, the breeder that I was purchasing the puppy from. He had faith in me that I was going to make the payment. I did. I had no idea I was going to be scammed. I don't think like a thief. I can't carry the guilt that I did something wrong because I didn't. And so it's been hard for me because many of you were just as excited about the puppy as I was. So you were congratulating me. Several of you have been asking me and my standard response is things just didn't work out. I'm waiting on a new litter in June. We are waiting on a new litter for June. 
but my husband's stipulations, and I totally agree, is if we can't drive within South Carolina or to North Carolina, Georgia, Florida, Tennessee, within a day trip to pick up a puppy, we're not getting one. We do want a beagle breed. I grew up with beagles. Um, my dad was a hunter. We had a yard full. A beagle is what I wanted. Um, we wanted a registered beagle, um, which is hence why we were looking outside the state as well. Um, long story short, <laughs> I'm saying too much because it still irritates me. It still makes me nervous. Um, that's what happened with the puppy. However, I have a local person now that um, she has worked with me before. Her husband raises beagles for hunting and we wanted a male. He likes the females for hunting. He said they're better temperamented, temperament um, for hunting dogs. And so those puppies, the litter is to be born in the middle of June, which means that we may have a puppy as soon as August. So we are still getting a puppy. Puppy. It will not be little Jonesy because little Jonesy is is a figment of someone's imagination, and um, I'm going to bypass that. I don't even know where to stop with that story, so I'm just going to stop. <laughs> so let's get back to the stitching. Um, I did make one finish, a full finish that I shared you. And um, let me get my composure back. I made a full finish on a prior finish, and this is on Valentine Row by Bent Creek Designs. I took inspiration from Helen D here on Floss Tube. She finished up one of the rows. It was not Valentine Row, it was another one. I want to say it was March, and she made it into a drum. This is my first drum. It's not really a drum, it's more of a cake. Um, I, I do want to decorate it up a little bit more, I believe. But I want to share with you what I what I do have, and this is it. I used Vonna Pfeiffer's drum tutorial. She's very clear in what she says. I had no problems making it, no problems putting it together. I did differ from what she asked um, to be done a little. Um, one is going to be the stuffing. She used the walnut, crushed walnut inside with the um, the fiber fill. I put in some wood shavings because I had gotten some from my father because they had, um, he's a woodworker and so I had still had uh, shavings from my, my dad. And so those are in here. It is packed really tight, which Vana, both Vana and Helen said, just keep packing. I kept packing. <laughs> and Helen, I laughed when she did the video and I still laugh when I think about it where she says, you know, when you eat Thanksgiving dinner and you're so full, you're about to bust, and then they and you can't eat another bite, but they then they bring out the pie. She said, "That's how you stuff it. When you think you've got it full, just keep on stuffing." And I equate it to my stashing. I know I've got all the stash I need. I could stitch past my life expectancy, and yet I keep buying because they keep bringing out new patterns. <laughs> But this is it. So I had a couple of little flowers that I had made with a clover um, kit to make them. And I put little buttons on them and I just had them where I had been playing around practicing making them. And I put those on top. But you can see this is one of the things I would change on my next one. I think um, I measured an out an hour and a half. I measured two inches out, I think, or was it an inch and a half? I can't remember, whatever Vana called for in the tutorial. And then I did the quarter inch seam. The problem was, is that there's just too much space here. I noticed some drums, people have put decorator stitches, large um, elongated decorator stitches on the seam. Um, but if I did one again, I would keep that in mind. Some things are cinched, cinched right up to the, the the stitching on each side to make the drum this one i <clears throat> excuse me i've got too much space so i would have um if i do this again i will leave myself less space between the stitching on either side because it could have been smaller 
The other thing is, um, she suggested doing the top first on hers. I did the bottom. I knew mine was gonna be bigger. I wanted to make sure that I was very um, careful in doing the bottom because of the size of it. I didn't want it to be wonky and unlevel. Um, I did really good on the bottom. It is very flat. The same size circle for the top as for the bottom. My seams are straight. My linen's fine, but when I got to the top, I was fine, but you see that little lip. My drum has a muffin top. It's really pronounced here. So everything looks good, like right here where I started, and I started like where the seam is, so I could make sure I keep those edges, um, the folded over edges of the fabric where they would not be seen. I wanted to be very careful, so I started in here. This side going around looks really good. It's almost flush, and then as I got closer to the finish, it become more pronounced. So I don't know whether that's a fabric issue. Um, like I said, my, my circles were the same size. I made them at the same time. Just little imperfections. It's not gonna hurt anybody. I'm still proud of it. Um, I did cushion it very well at the top so I could put pins in it. Um, like I said, I'm happy with it. So, that being said, I would do another drum. I wouldn't do another drum this big. Because like I said, it's more like a cake and less like a drum. But it still makes me happy. So, what else do I have to say? So, in the coming week, I'm going to try really hard to focus on Redwort Sampler. Um, if I don't finish it this week, mm, it's okay. Um, I want to thank everyone who watched um, my three-tiered tray tutorial yesterday. I did post a tutorial because my daughter Chelsea and I were out back uh, making three-tiered trays when we weren't, weren't in the yard doing things. And it was very quick. It was very simple. Um, I think if we had stayed with it consistent, other than waiting for the paint to dry, it may have taken us 30 minutes, maybe tops, to get everything assembled and steady and set aside for the glue to dry. I'm very happy with it. It's already up in my stitch room. Um, many of the things I took the picture for the Instagram photo and the video photo are still on the tray because I love the look of them. Um, and I look forward to putting other little smalls on there because the back side, I was doing it so that you could see how it could look with your smalls. Um, I did not have the back of it filled, so I'm looking forward to putting things on the back. So if you've not watched that tutorial, I will link it below, but it is in um, my video list and it's actually the video before this one because I just released it yesterday and it is for a three-tiered tray um, that you can make using spray paint, E, what is it, E6, E3000, E3000 glue, and pie plates and candlesticks from the Dollar Tree store here in um, the U.S. So if you're interested in that, go take a look. But those that have watched and already given me comments and those that are gathering supplies to make it, I look forward to seeing your Instagram pictures so that I can be inspired by all of you. So until next time, until next weekend, um, happy Memorial Day and happy stitching. Take care. Bye-bye.